another podcast like this. Who gonna bring it to the table? Boss top. Check it, check it, check it. It's Unique House. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official, Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing, ain't no more there all going. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, our Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, you name it, we're on it. Let's go ahead and follow us. Type in Boss Talk Podcast 101 anywhere streaming podcast is available and you will find us. And if you want to see our visuals, definitely go ahead and check us out on our YouTube. Subscribe. Not only subscribe, but take the next step to join our membership. How you do so, at the bottom of this video and every video that we have, you'll see in the description section a link that can take you to that section. Okay, let's click the link. It'll take you to that section and you can go ahead and subscribe. Y'all say you love us, you love what we do. Just go ahead and do so. And we love you for it. Thank you very much and have a blessed day. Hey, man, what's going on, man? Listen, man, these guys don't need no introduction, man. These guys here, man, these boy H-Town <laughs> Finest is in the building, man. Where they at? Stop they playing, about? man. Bernard, my you know guy, Benoit, my what? guy, Toe Down, man. Yes, sir. Dirty South is what it's about, man. What's going on? We back, we back in here one more game, man. Good to have you back on the show. Man, blessed by the best. It's better to be here, better to be viewed and, than seen. Is that what it's? No, that's not how it goes. And better it's be good seen than to viewed. have you on here for the very first time. I want to be anywhere. That's amazing. Anywhere, yeah, that's anywhere that'll amazing. take me, I'll go. Hey, you hear that? Anywhere. You had anywhere, a I'm going. hell of a show last time, man. Um, it was a lot of people that got upset with you, but then a lot of people agreed with you. I didn't realize how many people was going to agree with you people about what? Feelings, man. Bun B, he said Bun right. B would slaughter Jay Z on the mic. Boom. Absolutely. And you stood no, on that. Out out. 25 grand out of my pocket, ready to go. Damn. Somebody, somebody <laughs> That's come serious. Take it. Somebody <laughs> come take it. I, I put my money on bun. And listen, people got really into their feelings about it. That was one of our, our most commented uh, posts that we did. And it was just crazy. Uh, my phone would bling three, four, five in the morning. And people would be in a heated discussion about it. You know? Wow. But I will say this. Consistently, people agreed with my opinion. So, I mean, there's a lot of people out there that think, Bun is not only the guy. They just don't think guy. of him in that conversation, you know. Right. They always think of Nas and Jay Z yep. and Biggie and yep. and and Tupac, but they never think of the greatest rapper alive. Right. Bernard Freeman. There you go. Because exactly. he got a good first name. You can trust a guy like that. Let me tell you. <laughs> I, I think it was the day before yesterday. I was I, I was just arguing about this in the barbershop this morning. Barbershop talk was uh People were telling me that Lil Kiki could not go in the booth and uh, out jam Eminem, and I had a problem with that. I said he could go in and he could make a good song. Eminem, yeah, he's on an over level, but we from the South. So the music is looked at differently. I just look at two guys that have been going in the booth all their life, and you're going to tell me this guy can't go in there and come out with something. I don't believe, and then they said, and, and I said, Pimp C, and they laughed at me. He couldn't either. And I'm like, y'all gauging it wrong. He's, he, for what he does lyrically, um, he does a great lyric, but as far as a big song, a nice song that's going to jam in the car every day, Eminem can't touch the South when it comes down to when that. When Pimp C would put the, the, put the you, organ in there, eh, did bam, you hear what I just said? No doubt yeah, about listen, it. Oh, Nobody doubt listen, it. Listen, I think, I think Kiki is one of the most uh, lyrical out of the screwed up clique. I think he represents it well as, you know, a captain and a general. Um, but I think you're right. When it comes to the South, the South doesn't get its praise. It doesn't get its flowers. It doesn't because we're that other coast. It's always been East, West Coast, so East, West Coast. Right. And so when the South came in, it like Pimpsey said, they didn't have time for us. Nobody was really like dabbing us, saying "Good job, way to go." Here when you go to Atlanta, what time are you on? Man, let's not get into that. <laughs> <laughs> let's not go over there. We'll have a whole other. Exp- but see, he was thought provoking, right? right? People talked about that shit forever. Right. You know, when he said, "I'm gonna lift up your skirt and expose your clitoris," man, you know, who said some stuff like that before? Man, he would make people me. think about where they were at and what they need to do and where they need to get to. Yep. But Bun, you know, if you just go back and listen to some of the stuff he's done, oh, you know, man. I used to argue that all the time. Guys in prison, they want to talk about who's the best rapper. So I'd always throw Bun in there like, Bun, you can't touch this guy. Show me the lyrics that beat these lyrics. Call Tommy up. <laughs> I'm not That's the right. Mariah. I'm not Messiah. I'm not, what did he say? I'm not Mariah. I'm the Messiah. That's right. So blow me up. That's right. <laughs> listen, but, you know, Kiki, he's a Eminem. He's a different style. You know, Eminem is more of a battle rapper. Eminem is more of a uh, uh, 
a multi-syllable rapper when it comes to that. That's right. Don't have to say nothing about you. I, I would think I <laughs> would, what he did he to people. would probably be more melodic with what he flows about. But then again, you know, as far as coming out making hits, I think if you're a fan of the South, you're going to love the South and what we do. And being on an Eminem song, I mean, come on now. That would be like the ultimate, right? Having one of our own represent with one of the best. I mean... I mean well, let's just talk, let's yeah, just talk, this up. Let's just talk about it for let, let, let's talk about it for a minute. You got guys, y'all. Infinite came out in 1996, right? But in 1996, we also had um, say Riding Dirty came out. Right. Also, we had um, uh, All Eyes on Me came out. So uh, also we had uh, Ice Cream Man. Oh. See, right. we got a hell of a year. I'm just trying to show you how we... we right. We, you didn't I mean, hear about the South like that, but these songs... If you songs, look at the liner notes, you always see Pimp C's name and a bunch of people's stuff, you know? Yeah. But they don't have liner notes anymore, so you can't really read what's going on with the, the other folks in there. Yeah, but, you know, when you're talking about, you know, the South and how we represent, um, you know, musically, you know... I, I don't think it gets it. It's, it's just right. Like Killer Mike, for instance. He's probably one of the coldest ones out here right now. And I mean, if people are talking about, you know, best lyricists in the game, I mean, I'd have to put Killer Mike as a close second to Bernard and then, you know, rock Most out from that. Me. But yes. I mean, I, I just don't think that, you know, we're we're looked at as a favorable, you know, community. I think people think of, oh, the South is Atlanta, it's dance music. Oh, you got New Orleans where it's more bounce music. You know, Texas, you got that slab culture. But they say boxing, make, the style makes good fights, you know? And right. so if you're going to rap against somebody, you got the same kind of style. You just can't be, someone can't be just all into the culture and think of this way and then rap against somebody who's talking about cars and you know, it's a different if it's a different style. You know, that's where, and I think that's where Eminem would like roast everybody because he's that style of battle rapper. You know, that's good. And Take his side so he don't say nothing about you. That's good. I can hold my own. I don't, hey, look, man, I don't bury you, man. I don't, don't let that dude do that. You know, deep down, down. I think I think you hit it on the knob. Like I think it's just different people talking and and dealing with different cultures and different ways that we rap. So. Uh, down here, I think it's more man. We jam, bro, and and that's all it is to it. If you listen to the regular yeah. version of Pip in the Pen with Kiki, right? I mean, just the way you put that whole thing together, and they had to pitch it back down from to get it, you know, screwed down like that. I mean, that's just that's a work of art. That what was it? Don't mess with Texas, and you shouldn't. There's no reason to mess with Texas. Why would you do that? We have our own thing. We're a big enough state. We can declare ourselves as an independent country. Well, who wants to fuck with that? Just yeah. go do your songs, and if you don't like it down here, move around. And, you know, uh, eleven sixteen just passed, so that was a big day in Houston. You know, everybody remembers Screw. Everybody remembers what he's done, <laughs> the legacy that, you know. And listen, he was only around for a short period of time. Imagine if he had gotten an extra five years on top of that. Imagine what his impact would have been then. You know, it, it's just one of these things that, you know, I, I miss my brother. And, um, yeah, man, I, 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 it's tough. It's tough to see so many young, talented people like Hawk in his prime, Big Pokey in his prime. I mean, Big Mo in his prime. I mean, Pimp But don't C. you think that adds to the legend when you go too early? Well, I mean, being an artist and all. I mean, I'm not an artist. So I don't want to go listen, too early. There's I want some, to have it time just right for me. There's some sexiness as you're an artist and you want to be always remembered, right? And how do you do that, right? You know, Tupac. How do you be the the Elvis of rap, you know, rock and roll? You can't be seventy eight I mean, doing that, can you? Tupac is like the number one or number two uh, leading seller in uh, dead artists. Like I think it's Elvis and him. You know? Michael Jackson's in there somewhere. The greatest Michael, entertainer Michael of all time. Michael Jackson is is in there, but so he's already up there, you know. And so when you leave a legacy, I think there is some type of sex. Why don't you leave a legacy? I'm not ready to get the hell out of here. No. Oh, listen, I didn't know we're taking a vote tonight. Everybody wants you know, to go. Vote all, your, your torch has been put out. Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. They know? don't want to go today. You know? That's true. Go ahead and get so, it. So, but Let's leaving a legacy, um, what does that entail to leave a legacy? Well, I, I think first and foremost, it's got to be par partially your word and what your word means to other people. You know, are you that guy that they can uh, call when something goes wrong and you can help out? Uh, do you do stuff because you do it out of the kindness of your heart or do you do stuff because you want to let other people see what you do? What does it matter? I, if you're doing something good, what does it matter if you care what people see what you do? Well, as long as you're doing something good. Yeah, but, you know, you can always be that, you know, I don't want to get too, you know, 
biblical on people, but well, don't. if you make your face look like you've been fasting a long time and you do the way, oh, huh? oh my God, let me tell you how many days I've been fasting 48. versus the person who doesn't say anything about it, who washes their face, who looks clean, who looks lively, who looks, you know, responsive and they don't mention anything about it. Which one do you think receives the greater reward? Right. So I think there is a, a difference when it, it does matter why you do it. You know, do you do things because you want to get recognition from other people? Yes. Or do you want to do things because you want to help other people out? <laughs> yes. But there are different types of leg- legacies because Tupac, when you think when you all were talking about Tupac, what kind of good things did Tupac do? Well, think about everything he, he was involved with, with the Black Panthers growing up. You know, he was always. Uh, a pro-black um, a person who who spoke on serious issues that matter, especially about prison reform. Like one of the biggest things we work on at the Dope Heads is prison reform and how we can make a difference. You mm-hmm. know, changing this you know mandatory minimum for this and people given draconian sentences and get a baby life sentence and never see their family in twenty five years. This is ridiculous. You gotta let some people people who don't know anything about drugs make policy on drugs. That's right. We would never let someone make fiscal policy on people who have no idea what a dollar is. How do you mm-hmm. We continue to do that stupid policy because people feel that they work from an emotional standpoint. So anytime you do anything emotional like love, what's love got to do with it? It all begins with a number and ends with a number. The black <laughs> godfather. That's my real dad. <laughs> he just cut to it. He's like, hey, listen, get all that emotional shit out the way. And what is it, right? And so sometimes you ask yourself, well, what am I leaving behind? How do people know that I've been here, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think if you, if there's a bridge in Houston that says be someone, but be someone who matters, right? Whether it's good or bad, leave a legacy of something. Right. Sometimes people are just assholes and you remember they're an asshole forever. And you're like, don't be like that guy. He's an asshole. <laughs> so sometimes your legacy is you're an asshole. But if you look at it and say, hey, that's something for me to look at I don't want to do, right? That's still a legacy, you know? Mm -hmm. I talk about my mom sometimes because sometimes I'll just be laughing because the shit she taught me, she was smarter than most people I know. She just knew how to finesse the words. She knew how to get her point across, and she knew how to drive it through you and still make you think it was your idea after she cut you up. Oh, she was one of those. Oh, she was a word ninja. Listen, oh, man. She could the, slice and dice, competition, give me an example. the price. Give me an example of something she did. So my mom was mad that the lady next door had moved without telling her goodbye. <laughs> but my mom had wrote her a nasty letter that her banana tree was pushing up against her fence. Move your fucking tree. <laughs> <laughs> And my mom could not understand why this lady, she moved and never told me goodbye. Listen. Because you wrote her a nasty letter. <laughs> wow. But if she was right. Don't, we got a brand new fence. Move your shitty ass plant off my fence. But my mom, it was about the principle of it, right? She used to babysit some kids. And if the people, they would give her $500 at Christmas time. But if they owed her 48 cents, she wanted her money. Yeah. Uh, messing with my money is like messing with my emotions. <laughs> I want my money in my hand. Yeah. And so she would write him a letter. You know, it would be like, hey, boom, 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 here are the points. And listen, don't let this get in the way of us having a good relationship. They just felt good about doing the stuff they were supposed to do anyway. Listen, when I- And she left a legacy of that because some of the stuff I see as Brian can pitch. When Brian's talking about the dope ass and he's pitching, I just listen sometimes like, that's a bad motherfucker in there. Who <laughs> is it? Why does he have my brother's body? <laughs> but-, but he's able to do it. So my mom and my brother can do it. They do it because they know how to do it. I want to know... Why do they keep doing it, right? How do we get them to perform every time? I want to see them to jump through the hoop every time. They don't give a shit. They just no. know it's natural to them. I know it's natural to me, but I want to know why. And if I say certain words, can I get them to trigger it every time? I want to know the science behind it. The history so I can just go boom. each other. Huh? Yeah, all, no, no, I don't like him. <laughs> Listen, we make <laughs> My older brother? Person. No, I don't like that guy. Get out of here. Um, but my mom wrote me a note when I was 18 years old True. and she put it on my door. <laughs> And she had a she had a subtle way of saying, "Hey, get your shit together." And basically, what the note said it said, "Brian, you have to do one of three things: you either have to go to the military, you either have to go to school, or get a job. But you can't smoke cigarettes in my house all day long." Hit the road, Jack. And so my birthday was, you know, less than a week away, and my mom gave me the fair warning, like, "Hey, it's time to get your shit together." And so, you know. Unless somebody is willing to love you unconditionally and allow you to make mistakes in life, but to give you the correct guidance that you need so you can, you know, reflect that on other people later on in life, I think not that that's not only a symbol of how great my mom was, but how she allowed us to be who we needed to be. She mm-hmm. didn't. That's a legacy. 
My mom was, she was like, hey, look, I'm going to spend $35, $35 on this doctor visit. You go in there and you tell him what's wrong with you. I'm not telling him what's wrong with you. So make sure you get it prepared. We'll go over before you go in there and you're going to tell him what's wrong. So we were able to talk to doctors and shit at a very early age. So there wasn't anybody that we didn't think we could talk to, you know, like, well. How just, early? How young was it? Probably oh. five or six, you know, because oh. that was your Christmas gift. You fucked that up, right? If you have to go back and pay the extra money for it, oh, man, yeah, that's your Christmas gift. Yeah, we were told all through high school, don't get injured because we don't have insurance. You'll die. And if you want to play football and your You'll die. snaps. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to hold your hand with a rubber glove. No, that was for AIDS. I won't be able to do anything for you. Well, he also told my girlfriend she was a whore in front of her face. He was tr- that, my uh, father was telling the truth, though. He she was. was. She was. Brian likes to date some whores. But who doesn't? I mean, who doesn't? <laughs> Y'all came from a very outspoken family. We are. Well, listen, you can say anything you want to say in the house. As long as you get what you want to get out, get out, right? You can say fuck. Very early, people was like, man, I learned how to curse at the Terrio house. Because it was wide open over there. You can say what you wanted to say. You can be who you wanted to be. It didn't matter. But if my dad wanted to make fun of you, he was going to make fun of you. Right. If the guy had one leg, he called him Peg Leg, yeah. right? If he had red hair, hey, go get Rusty. <laughs> what is name Rusty? Yeah. But that's what they called people. We make it so easy for kids to give up now, you know? We want them to have a better life. We want our kids to have a better life. So what do we do? We take all of that away from them. They are so stupid that they cannot make a decision (laughs) on anything. Everything is so easy for them. Oh, I don't want them to have to struggle. Well, the struggle is how you learn how to do shit. That's right. Right? So we we take it all away. And when I hear the, I got to have a mental health day. And I say, well, listen, there were some guys in 1942 that were 18. They needed a mental health day because they let down the back of a boat and bullets were flying through these motherfuckers. (laughs) That's a mental health day. But when you take it, you take it all away from they have nothing to worry about. Well, what the fuck do they got to do? No. So sometimes you got to have some obstacles in your way so you can think past them. So you have to be a thinker. If you're not thinking, because I don't have any muscles, you know, my arm is the exact same size from my wrist <laughs> to my shoulder. I just need and enough it's strength. Bright. To, it's bright. To, <laughs> Turn it's been COVID. It's whatever. <laughs> let, let me let me ask. Let me jump in here. Um, I just want to uh, like. You are in the real estate, right? Real estate is the only thing that's real. Okay, but what, if I had to ask you, what's the biggest deal that you've ever done? Uh, probably about $50 million. See, so I do it a bunch of different ways, right? I buy real estate. I sell real estate. I do the loans for real estate. So when I go do my deals, I put my deal together all the way through already, right? So I know, I know where I'm going to be at in that deal. When you don't know what the numbers are. See, people lie. People lie about numbers, but the numbers themselves will not lie. Mm -hmm. So I'm a numbers guy. So the one thing I can depend on in the morning when I can put my feet on the ground are the numbers are going to be the exact same because the numbers have not changed on me. If I I go buy a house and there's a house in the neighborhood that just looks like this one and I do the same shit to it, I should be able to get the same money they got for that house because we're doing a comp, right? Apples to apples. It's in the same neighborhood. Absolutely. So I try and find them on the same street, right? right? As close as I can to it because then I can say, that lady's house right there sold for this. I should be able to get that. that exactly. It makes it easier to line up your money because why would you go spend $400,000 when the most you can sell it for is $400,000? Mm-hmm. So if you follow the formula, I'm a big formula, if you follow the formula every time, you will get the results that you want every time. But finding a deal is hard. That's why people make it seem so easy. Come to our seminar. It's free. Just, you know, we'll give you the stuff for free. Everything's free. Just enjoy yourself. No word. Put your feet in the dirt. Before I got into real estate, I had heard a guy, Nick Fertucci. I'm a former NYC PD cop, and I make real estate deals happen. I'm like, that is a lying motherfucker. (laughs) Not just because he's a cop. But because how can you do something to make money and never have to do anything to it? Most real estate gurus are rich because Holy they shit. sell courses about real estate and they don't do it. See, what Bernard does is he's like the anti-guru. I'm the guru killer. My <laughs> head's not very big. I don't talk, talk really loud. Listen, if you want to talk real estate, <laughs> my brother will talk to you about real estate. The difference between my brother and everybody else is hustle muscle. Most people don't have the desire and push through to hear 99 no's before they hear a yes. And I overcome the adversity. So you have to you have to overcome small obstacles to get what you want. Right. Not every door is going to be wide open, so you have to be prepared for failure. You have to be prepared for rejection. Write it in your business plan. Failure. Skin your knee. How it's going to happen. How can you pivot? How can you make the next call better? What can you say to make the next call work? You know, call, call, call. When you're done calling, call some more. When you're done calling, call some more. When you get a deal, call some more. Get a backup deal. Because every person you meet, if they say no today, that just means no for today. Things change tomorrow. Things change next week. And so you have to be persistent and willing to overcome small obstacles like hustle 
he can teach you how to do it in less than two hours and show you how to make money. But are you going to go and push through? That $50 million deal you just said. Now, I, he didn't I, walk I, away no, with $50 million. No, I know million. it, that but still, just, that was the... We didn't get that, though, because the deal, but, deals are all the same. There's the same structure, right? There's just another zero and a comma in it. Correct. But were you excited to make that deal? Even though I know you. I'm excited about every, every deal. deal. I'm excited he about playing dreams. dice. He if I can get a deal going, he dreams in money, like <clears throat> numbers my, and my, dollar signs. My brother, my brother's always been amazing at putting contracts together. When we signed the deal with Electra, he made sure that every <laughs> nine months we got paid in advance plus ten percent. That was they awesome. Couldn't, they couldn't shelve us. When it came time to pay us our our other million and our change to Sylvia Rome's. She was going to have to be $2 million in and hadn't even released a video yet. I don't even think she liked so, Brian that much. No, I don't like me that much. She liked Brian. <laughs> Again, my brother saw what it was and was able to pivot. Next move, we have a studio where I'm recording my next album and people are asking for studio time. Well, he pivots again, and now we're in the studio business. People need tracks. People need engineering, mastering. Well, he pivots again, and we do more business. So it was never just like, hey, how can we you know, figure out the next hustle? It's when uh, an opportunity is presented, and you have to pivot from it or change up. How do you pivot? How do you move on? How do you execute? And that's when one thing Bernard's been always good at is figuring out a way to execute. I just know the skills that I have, and I know they fit to a bunch of things. All I got to do is turn what product it is, right? Whatever made you successful will make you successful if you have a different product in it, right? So I, I didn't smoke weed, but I knew how to sell weed. I don't know how they make Cheetos, but I know I can sell them motherfuckers, right? <laughs> Selling is just the same technique over and over again. So if I can get you to perform every time when I say the key word to you, bing, 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 and you'll perform for me, then I'll keep saying that key word until you say no or bring out a gun. <laughs> then I'm gonna have to go leave and repivot. <laughs> How old were you when you first um, realized this method? I will tell you. So people always ask you, hey, listen, what do you want to do when you get grow right. up? Mine was always be rich. And the reason was because I saw my parents fight about money every day. There was a dog fight every day. My dad get pissed off with no food in the house. We're going to the grocery store. Give me the checkbook. <laughs> he, I'm going to write a bad check tonight for this groceries. <laughs> because those things were always an issue. We knew what the light bill was when we were real young. We knew what the how much insurance was. They didn't hide that kind of stuff from us. You could say fuck in there and you would know how much like HLMP. I don't work for HLMP. Shut that door. For so long, I thought my dad worked for HLMP. It turned out he didn't really work for them. <laughs> for so long, I thought my first name was son of a bitch. And it is. Yeah. <laughs> son of a bitch. Yeah. So they gave us a lot of opportunity they didn't know that they were giving us, right? right. Most parents don't. They try to hide that shit from the... I thought everybody got rainbow-colored mail when they were kids. I thought it came in yellow and pink and red. And everybody, you look at this stuff, no, it's all in white, right? Right. right. Like, well, right. fuck, what happened to us? And then, so being rich would solve those problems because I saw what it did when you have to fight over money all the time. Now, what did I want to do? I don't know. But I'm not, I'm not good at music. I didn't even make it in the elementary choir. I, <laughs> I was the only person not to make it in an elementary choir. <laughs> I don't smoke weed. I went to prison for smoke for weed, right? Right. I don't give a shit what the product is. How do we make money out of the deal and drive it forward? That's right. It didn't dawn on me until someone said, hey, listen, why don't you find something you like doing? I'm like, I like making money. I don't give a shit if it was shoveling shit. If we can make some money and we can sell it, then that's what we need to go do. I never smoked weed. Brian had a little bag of weed. <laughs> I said, what is that? You can't have weed at mom and dad's house. He said, no, no, I'm going to sell this for $110. I said, how do we get more of that? Next thing I know, they're dropping off pallets of Mexican dirt weed in 500 bundles, 500 pound bundles, on the front porch of the house. Well, listen, you gotta. You gotta <laughs> Wait a minute, man. I, I gotta ask you this, man. Like, because you're a numbers guy, how how did you. When was the first time you seen a, a, a million dollars in, in, in your life? Marijuana was help, able to help me see a million. Listen, when people ask me, hey, do you think you can help me move some money around? I said, listen, go to Academy and get the largest igloo cooler you can possibly get that you're going to go fishing with, right? That big one that they can sit in the back of the truck. Uh -huh. And then vacuum seal all the money you got. And if there's still room in there, you don't need me because you don't have enough money yet. Mm. Right. You can vacuum seal money and put in an igloo cooler and travel all around the country you wanted to because it doesn't smell now. People don't usually ask you to open up your cooler. You can get a lot of money in there. A million bucks is only 1,000 thousands. It's not a bunch of money. Right. If you've had $1,000 before and you can get to 1,000 of them, you have a million dollars. People make it seem like it is this big freaking number that's out there. It's not. It's 1,000 thousands. Mm -hmm. A million. Yeah, so what, what most people don't understand is that um, the first million 
it's the most difficult million to make. Right. After that, now you're able to play with larger amounts. Now you're able to do instead of one house. Because you know what the formula is to get to the one million. You can do four houses. So like Bernard was saying, there's a sweet spot in real estate. If you can stay in between, you know, the 275 range, do a $100,000 rehab and sell it for <laughs> under 500000 you're making good money. You're making $100,000. Because that's where most of the market falls into, right? So mm-hmm. if you can multiply that out, so four of those would be, you know, somewhere between, you know, a million and a million five after all the rehab. But the money that you're going to make from that, you know. It's all made where? It's made at the purchase. So that's right. All the money's made at the buy. If you, you didn't buy it at the right price, you might as well roll your window down, correct. throw your money right out the window. Correct. Because a deal is not a deal unless it's really a deal. And how do you know? Because there's a formula that tells you if it's a deal. Right. Don't force it into the formula. Don't lie to yourself about it. It's hard to get a deal. I Most have, people uh, my, my mentor told me, he said, and he did and gone now, but he said, you need to, I told him, I said, I want a million dollars. He said, uh, hey, your dream is too small. You know, no, no, you know what he told me? He said, you don't want a million dollars. You want uh, 10 houses worth 100000 There you go. When Brian and I, so we used to, we you were, the, saying, like, we were of the Dave Ramsey group, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I, yeah I, we financial did Peace too. University yeah, prison, did, right? Yeah, I, I was too. like, oh, I'm taking all these classes in here. <laughs> but yeah. the truth is, when we got out, I was talking to a guy, I was like, we're going to buy this house. And he's like, you and your brother got to be the dumbest motherfuckers. This is about <laughs> leverage, right? That's right. Take that 100000 buy nine houses with $10,000 down, hold 10000 back. That's right. So in case there's some repairs and shit that happen mm. to those houses so you can get whole. Oh, so this is a profit deal, which made me look at hard money and say, hey, listen, hard money moves so much faster than bank money. When I went to the first bank to get my loan, I said, hey, listen, my line 36 on here because I'm a small business guy. <laughs> does it, you know, she said, is this not an accurate reflection of your tax return? I said, give me back my stuff. <laughs> that was not the place for me to be. But hard money, you can move so much faster. I can get an extra deal in per year, which makes up all the time and extra money I was going to pay. What's the difference between anyway. hard money and... So this is how I look at money. So there's a safe money, right? But it takes a long time to get to the safe money. Or there's a guy standing next to the dump. Hold on. Safe money is bank. Bank money. Institutions. You know, good credit. Good. uh, Shit we don't really know about. We start off on the negative side from the get-go, you know? So so hard money is basically a short-term loan for you to buy a property and... uh, take the repair budget and get everything done in a short period of time. So they're learning on the asset, not the person's credibility, Correct. right? Okay. So if the asset is worth something, they say in the future, well, if you fix it and it's worth 300000 I'll loan you money against the 300000 You just got to go put this plan in place. I'll loan you the money. But those guys are in the best place because what do they do? They loan you 70% of the value of the property. So. Well, how do you mess that deal up? Even if you messed it up and you had to take it back, you still bought a property at a super price. That's right. Mm. So if you're loaning hard money, you're making good money. You're making anywhere between 8 and 14% in a short term. You know, if you're using hard money, you want to do the repair as quickly as possible so you can refinance out of that, and then you have more opportunity to sell the house or do whatever you need to be. Yeah, because I see a lot of people always flip houses. They find houses that are in foreclosure. Oh, Bye. man, that's a long that road. Fix it that's a long road dealing with foreclosure. Yeah. All that road and shit, have that's a, too much. You have a better chance of just going on to HAR and calling realtors and making lowball offers than you do having to get a... a so let's just talk, we're, we're gonna, we'll cover that real quick. So everybody thinks if you get a foreclosure, oh, man, you got the best deal you got. Right. But there's 78,000 people competing for that one bad foreclosure, right? Right. right? The bank's trying to get to their money because now they know that the, the market has risen. They want their money, too. So they're usually performing what, what it says in an appraisal. Guys that, uh, most of the properties they want to talk about off-market properties. That's properties that are not listed on HAR or the MLS or Zillow or any of that stuff. Correct. It's an off-market deal. But only 3% of the properties are bought and sell off-market. 97% of the properties are bought and sold MLS style on the market. All I got to do is pick up the phone and call every realtor and ask them, will they take my offer? 70% minus the repairs. Is your client interested in entertaining this offer? Correct. Because what I'm looking for is their motivation. Mm-hmm. Not if they'll take the money, because I'm trading them time for money. You know how many people I've seen get a divorce in Home Depot? <laughs> They're fighting over the fan on a Saturday, right? Well, this fan, we're not gonna put it there. We're, so the realtor tells them to declutter and paint, right? They declutter and paint to make the realtor more money, which is the worst contract on the earth, because what you have done is essentially pay for somebody to actively negotiate against you. Yep. Who does that? That is a conflict of interest, right? 
No, don't have the reader just calling me. Don't like or subscribe me either. I don't need no more extra people yeah. calling me about shit. I don't care. I'm not that into people. Don't like or subscribe me. Uh, but, you know, so, I make it easy not to like me. So a better way than actually flipping the property yourself is just flipping the paper or what they call wholesaling. So you go find the deal and you don't even have to lift a hammer, do any of the financing, come up with the money. The only thing you're doing is putting your tax on it and selling it to somebody who wants to do it. Your flip. fee. You don't make, make it no tax. Yeah. So okay. your fee, your so tax. So if we whatever. find if you want to sell a house for a hundred grand, but we know the value that we could probably sell it for is 125, and you're looking for a flip that fits into your formula at 125, we're gonna sell you this house that we got out of contract on. We have equitable rights in the contract. Mm -hmm. That was gives us the right to sell it to you because we have equitable rights in the contract. Right. So when I first got started, people were like, oh, that's illegal, you can't wholesale house. But when people start and they say no money down, that's what they're talking about. You get a contract from somebody oh, okay. and then you sell it to somebody else. Right. You make your piece in the middle of what you negotiate between the two sides. Right. So I'm gonna give you this contract, but you're gonna go perform to everything that is said in that contract, right? Mm -hmm. So that's called an assignment of contract. And what makes it legal is that you have an equitable right. You own some equity in the contract to be able to go sell it. Right. So a lot of people think they'll change the rules in Texas and, oh man, they're gonna change the rules and you're not gonna be able to do that anymore. But it was really written for the cattle ranchers because as they would herd cattle through, they would sell some of it, but they didn't have time to go to the courthouse and do all that mumbo jumbo. So they just kept it moving so they had an equitable right in the contract, right? But when we were talking about real estate, we were talking about rentals, right? But when you have rentals, if one bad air conditioner goes out in your nine, that's 8,000 bucks, it sucked up most of your cash flow that year. Yep. But if you own or finance it, right? If you bought it at a reduced rate and you put someone in there and you own or finance it to them, now the bank does not go over there and fix your air conditioner. Wells Fargo will not come fix your air conditioner. No. But your landlord will. So I take the equation all the way out. I'd rather own or finance you the house than mess around and have to go over there and lease it to you. Right. So one of the things that kept us from being in the real estate business for a long time was that Bro, I was like, let's buy some rental houses. I'm like, man, I don't want to fuck with no rental houses. The lady's going to call me on Thanksgiving. I'm fat. I'm about to carve a turkey. She yeah. tells me her heater doesn't work. I go over there, and it's on air condition. That's <laughs> why some people would always... I know some people who would buy houses and do it to Section 8 because with Section 8, they said that they deal with all the repairs. They deal and with so everything. And so let's talk about that. I'm not a Section 8 guy myself, and the reason why is I'm mean, I don't want to deal with it. But it's the same process you have in place to rent it to somebody. It's the same process you'd rent it to Section 8. If they don't qualify for your program, they do not get the property. But who was the only people that still got paid during but the whole they pandemic? they don't have to repair it, though. You, it's you not don't have to repair it. Section, repair. Eight, Section 8 deals with all the repairs, right? Well, I, I'm not, I, I don't know all that, but I don't think that at some point you have to fix your stuff. Correct. But what it does, you have that. You can count on that check every month. That's during right. COVID, right, people stop paying their... They stopped paying their lease or whatever, but the guy that owned the property, he didn't want his credit to go back, so he continued to pay it even though he had a tenant that wasn't paying him. Mm -hmm. But Section 8 eliminated all that for some people because they're like, ha, got them, right? <laughs> all my people are Section 8. Yeah. So when you have better things in place to screen your tenant, right? right? One of the things I was always really bad about, you got some money today, you can have that bad man pajama today. <laughs> but usually the people who have it today have some cash, credit's messed up, right. they only got a limited amount of cash, right? So when I'm owner financing to somebody, some people say, you gotta put 15% down. But if you only have 15% to your name and I take it from you, now you're in a bad position because mm. if one little hiccup happens, you're in, the, you're in the crapper with me. So I try and ask people where they're at, right? right? I'm looking for motivation. What is their motivation to sell it for? Well, for 198 days it was on the market. He did not budge on that price. The wife got sick, she needs to go to MD Anderson. The price has now changed. They need to go to MD Anderson. The kids' college fund has changed. They need to go to college. So we're looking for their motivation. Every house is a potential uh, grab. You just gotta know how to talk to somebody. When we first started, I got all those letters in the mail that said, I wanna buy your house for cash. I said, who in the fuck's got all get this those, cash? I get, those, I get those calls all the time. Like, okay. <laughs> Um, You're a told, bad list, man. I'm like, who told you you wanted to sell our house? Why so do you keep wanted, calling? So what they tell you is they you signed up somewhere on one of our partner sites on the we internet. We haven't signed I up know, for anything. But that's what they got to tell you because what are they going to say? Ah, we just taking they a, we're just cold calling you. Yeah. <laughs> so exactly basically what, what they're doing is they're trying to put your house under contract, right? They want to make you an offer that they're probably not going to fulfill to get you to sign with them so they can go take your house and try to sell it to one of these flippers. 
if nobody bites, they come back to you and say, hey, we got to reduce the offer. It's $10,000 less or until you get comfortable. And Those are shitty in. people. And so what happens is then he takes that contract and he puts his tax on it, his five, 10 grand, and he sells it to a flipper. So the money that the flipper has pays for the house, and that's how they're able to do the old no money down thing. It's all no money down. It's all cash. You know, you're dealing with a title company. Money's in the escrow. It happens instantaneous. So it's all right there. You know, so when people are calling you or they send you a letter in the mail that we buy your house for cash, they just want to buy your house and try to sell it to a flipper if they're not doing the rehab themselves. They always say like right now is. Uh seller's market, not a buyer's market. But the truth is, you gotta be able to make money in the good times and the bad right. times. If right. not, if I'm waiting for the bubble every time, I'm waiting on the bubble, y'all. Yeah, you well, know, I'm gonna miss all the bubbles through. that come on. You but if I get into the fight, right? right? When we first got into the, when I first started looking at real estate, they're like, man, Houston's a tough market, man. There's a lot of people in there. I'm like, perfect. Because there's competition there. When McDonald's opens up a place and they put it on the corner, and Burger King opens up across the street, the McDonald's like, Fuck, they found us. <laughs> Shut it down. No, because it brings more people to the area. Right. The right. competition will drive the people up the ladder and those who aren't. Any industry will have the same amount of people that do the shit. Everybody else is eating hot dogs, right? In the music business, there's a few guys in Houston that make the shit happen, right? right. Everybody talks about it. Some of the best rappers I know are in apartment complexes. They're just too lazy to go and do anything about it. Yeah. Guys that take action win the day. Just take action. Move forward. If you skin your knee, get up, skin it again, keep moving forward, yeah. right? But people don't want to do that. So like, I started flipping house and I quit. Oh, weren't you doing that business? La, la, la. And they, they feel bad that they had to tell a motherfucker that, right? I tell everybody every week I'm going on a diet. It is a bold-faced lie. The only person that knows it's a lie is me. <laughs> but they want to say, oh, how's that diet working for you? I'm like, well, fuck you too. We know it's not working because I have not done it. It's people just lack <laughs> motivation and hustle. So if you're willing to hustle, you can be a millionaire. Hustle. If, hustle. But it's just about if you're willing to go hustle. You know, I know people who have successful products and they say, oh, I just can't get motivated. Like, what are you talking about you can't get motivated? Every, every day is a gift. Get your butt up and get moving, you know? Mm -hmm. what, to, what do you What do you think when you when you guys, let's, let's, I want to go back for a minute. Like, you guys both. Do we have to do the wavy thing? Like, we're going to make a time. Yeah, I just I, I just know that when when you got busted, yeah, you and, got and, busted. and you was going to you was all on the news and all everything. I didn't see this guy because he's why, good. He's not supposed hell, to be seen. Why, no, why was this guy? Why was Bernard not in? The, he was not on the front row, but we know he was the brainiac behind. Allegedly, him. listen, Bernard, no, that's true. That's all Bernard, true. Gets <laughs> Bernard gets enjoyment from driving in a Toyota, wearing thirty dollar black mesh shorts. Wearing flip flops, you know. These are Adidas Crocs. You know, I I like the finer things in life. Does he? I like, he's a smart uh, guy. He's uh, very intelligent. Uh, very <laughs> very smart. When you have a nice car, they always ask you, "Hey man, can you loan me some money?" Right? I used to go pick up a bunch of money, and guys would get in the car, and they'd be like, "Hey man, that's pretty nice right there." <laughs> I'm getting rid of this motherfucker because it's costing me money today. That's right. So, and so Brian, he likes to go and push it to the limits and be at the Rockets game. Brian took me. He's like, "I need to stop by the the compacts, and I need to pick up some tickets." The motherfucker met him over there with hors d'oeuvres and shit. And I'm like, who the fuck is this for? <laughs> Brian, he's picking out the seat. We're going to have six games here. And we'll have nine games here. It was a private tour. Private and tour. They, they do that for season ticket holders. Do you want to go to the Ralph Lauren private event? They'll have, uh, what the fuck are the uh, Opal I, fucking buttons? Button the fucking shirt already. So I like Mother of Pearl. That's it. I Mother like, fucking I like pearl buttons. Things. I like Ralph Lauren purple label. Bernard's happy with a Walmart short and damn, you went down Walmart. Shirt. Walmart's mesh minute ago with thirty well, bucks. Well, you listen. Yeah, I'm, not the truth be told, I'm not paying for all that. That's too much. He gets, <laughs> he gets more enjoy enjoyment from playing his numbers game than he does anything else in life. And so my brother's very motivated. He's super focused when, especially when it comes to real estate numbers, but. Listen, growing up, it was always difficult because he was always on my back. and I Oh, my God. Cry, baby. Uh, walk. Like, you're six foot and there's four. Only, there's only one set of footprints in the sand. It was mine, I assure you. Because I was carrying you. Yeah, the you whole time. see you lip around. Got, got, gave you two new hits, and you still can't do shit. I do have two, two brand new titanium. Thank you, Thank insurance. You. Thank oh, you. really? I, boom. Right. We didn't have insurance before. We yeah, were gonna so die. We got insurance. Why did you now. need that? So because he's uh, a baby. <laughs> no, so six months Faker. from prison, uh, <laughs> when 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 we came home from prison, 
um, I was bed bound. I had a walker. I couldn't walk. Oh yeah, you did tell me. And so what happened was still can't is, dance. Oh, I can bust a move now. <laughs> no, no, no. But but so what happened is um, my hip socket was grafting onto the bone that was my hip. And so I couldn't move. I had limited mobility. And so I finally got two hip replacements, and now I'm able to walk wow. like 53 pounds down. That's now. a brand new car right there. Yeah, so Work your hips. Yeah, Work so, it. But Let me see you work it. Again, you know, <laughs> I was motivated every day to get up and go do something, you know, mm. and you just have to stick with that, whether it's learning how to walk again or doing real estate or, you know. So when y'all were younger, did y'all used to fight? All the time. We don't never fight. No, I don't even know that guy. I don't Who used like to that. win? Uh, me. <laughs> I get that guy win. He loses a battle of wits every time I talk to him. Listen, oh, God. Said, never argue with a fool. And yeah. I never do. So, yeah. <laughs> what do you, when, when, you, when you first heard your brother uh, rapping, did you, That's crazy, isn't it? did you think you had talent? I didn't did give a shit if you had talent. I saw that there was a studio in Houston, Texas that recorded music. I thought they were only in L.A. So I worked at Bank One, right? I worked at Bank One during the day, and I went to school at night at U of H downtown. Get your cougar up. This was at U of H downtown where you could buy crack and smoke cigarettes before you had to go on campus, right? It's a real campus now. They got motherfuckers over there all tight and tight. I'm like, good lord. You could buy you could buy uh, hubcaps in the parking lot back then. But you could transfer to U of H Central without having to go through a bunch of SAT tests because it was open enrollment. I'm like, why in the fuck would I go down there and kill myself over this SAT when I can just go U of H Central? U of H downtown and a transfer so to U of H My Central. brother has always been intelligent, and I told him that I had an audition for rap a lot. Yeah. And he <laughs> said, What the hey, fuck are you talking about? He's like, <laughs> Listen, if anybody's going to steal your money, it's going to be me. So, and that's true. So let's just go ahead and see what you got. And so we put out this record with two other Caucasian guys called Thugs of Another Kind. And what, what ended up happening was, it was a learning experience. What does that mean? Anybody cost says money. learning experience, it cost usually you costs money. you time or you money, usually costs money, you money. money. And so what happened is we sold 5,000 units out of the trunk of our car, so we had something. We had already experienced what radio was like. Disappointment. And all, and all the failures radio brings <laughs> early on. If you don't know how to speak the radio language and they're asking for something and you're not delivering what that product mm -hmm. is, you're not going to get your record played. What do you want to do with the record? I yeah, want you to so play it. You have to what learn, do you want to do with the record? You have to learn what the language <laughs> is. So my brother, he said, hey, listen, I'll do one more record, but I'm not doing it with the other guys. If you want to do it, we'll focus on a record that you can do. You can bring If I'm going to lose my money, I want to be able to yell at one person during the day, right? He's like, I already had run. I don't need DMC and I don't need Jam. I don't need anything else but this one guy, right? And what's nice about rap music is you only have to, you can rap over the CD. You don't have to get a band, a bunch of motherfuckers to go set up and hear about their girlfriend while let them go to this show and all that bullshit. I don't have time for that. I want to go make the money. If you're going to hold up the cog in the program, Get the fuck out the way. So, Bernard was always like my babysitter. Oh, and so, job. what oh. happened was, is we were <laughs> able to do a song called The Country Rap Tune. Brian did the song called The Country Rap Tune. It was not what I wanted. But I was like, we can make some money here. <laughs> there were just too many people asking about the song when we were mastering. And they all want to know what that was, where can I get it, who's on that song. And when Big Hawk and Big Pokey had made a statement uh, on The Country Rap Tune... We knew that we were ahead of the game. We just didn't know where we were at in the game right. until every major record label came calling. And when they came calling, we were ready. He was We were ready to fly out, eat your lobster, and then get some for dessert and take it back with us. They're like, do you want anything else? Absolutely we do. We, we've already signed a deal. We just haven't told you that yet. <laughs> yeah, so my brother had multiple opportunities. You know, some came with less money, but a better promotional vehicle. Some came with a lot more money and no promotional vehicle. Some came with a promise that you'll have a gold record within six months. Mm -hmm. It was all basically designed, what do you want out of this? But I could figure out very early, if it went all shitty, right? If I have all your money, it's hard to get that back from me. Mm -hmm. You can promise me 10 points and 20 points in this deal and sign this guy, but if you don't like this guy, you're gonna sign nothing else I got. So give me as much cash as you have available to me so I can take that home with me. Once I was able to get that right now, I can do a bunch of different shit. You don't want to sign your whole label to one person because if this guy doesn't do anything, guess what? None of your other acts get to do anything. That's right. So people just had it a little bit mixed up. So I went and interviewed all the guys who had gotten a deal out of Houston. Hey, what did you like about your deal? What didn't you like about that deal? What would you have done different? What could you do right now? And you always heard about the guys that got stuck on a label for 10 years because they always let the record label pick one song. Mm -hmm. Hey, we're going to get to pick one song on that. Okay, cool. How hard can that be? Well, this isn't it. 
No, it's not it. Go get Keep working. Song. 40 songs into it. They haven't released an album. Seven years later, they're still there. I was like, they're not going to keep us like that. So every nine months, you got to bring the money. And they said, get the fuck out of here. Right. <laughs> so, so, you know, we were left with, you know, a half a million dollar advance. And I was like, man, I want a Lexus and a chain. And my brother was like, you're an idiot. If we I, knew that, though. If I give you that money, uh, you're going to have a depreciating asset. The jewelry's not going to shine six months from now. And you're going to be in I'm a gonna buy it from you. Gold. You're going to be begging mom and dad. So you gone. understood at that time, were you, like, mad with him when he told you something yes. like that? Or well, did yes. you understand what he Brian was trying to Brian showed up one time at a restaurant <laughs> with a brand-new two-door Maserati. He came in. I said, take it back. I don't even give a fuck how you got it. Take it back. So, you know. You never let me have any fun. I, so, <laughs> uh, listen. I, uh, there are certain times where people might be like, that motherfucker's out of his mind. Crazy. You ever tried to but, steer a boat from the water skis? <laughs> That's what it's like working with Brian sometimes. Brian has no budget and has been able to exceed it every time. You know, my brother would do things and put them in perspective like, hey, listen, I can give you this money and this chain and this <laughs> check to go buy this chain. But if we have a recording studio, oh. we can just make records, toe down records. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I was kind of greedy in the fact that I was like, well, shit, I want my own studio. Let's do, go to the studio thing. We didn't ever think that'd be a studio business. But what ended up happening was it became <laughs> a studio business. How much do you lease this for per hour? I was like, hmm. Well, what would you lease it for? <laughs> Everybody that came to record, they wanted to stay to record and work on their stuff. And at the time, I never even thought about that until my brother was like, yeah, we'll start it off. Yeah, we got a great engineer. He is fantastic. He has a Houston sound. And then what ended up happening was uh, we were able to book some studio time with Skip Holman out in Katy. And I really got to experience what a real person, a real engineer, what real ears sound like. And then once I had that knowledge, I was able to replicate that knowledge in the studio. That's partly true. Brian told me that he could use his equipment as Pro Tools. We're getting, we were the first one to have an all digital Pro Tools studio in Houston. Mm. We I spent a hundred grand on taking the corners out of the room. Our room was so tight. It was just, you're like, damn, I don't even know how to do this shit. This is yeah, tight. It was good. And Brian told me he could mix his songs. And the first song Brian mixed, it sounded like somebody <laughs> taking shit and put it in a blender and then threw it into your ear sockets. And I said, this is the shittiest stuff I have ever heard. So Brian and I got into a little argument about it. And I said, I know how to fix this. Let's find who the best beta Pro Tools tester is in Houston. Skip Holman, who had mixed some of the UGK stuff, right? I said, come on over. I'll show him how to do it. You can film it, the whole deal. Skip Holman showed him how to make the sound. Right. Brian was able to create from there to produce, right? Most guys are beat makers. Brian can actually produce because he can see what the song will look like. I have no idea what it looks like. Can we make some money on it? We need another album done. I said, Brian, we need to get that album done. He said, I have some writer's block. I said, unblock it if you want to eat next week. I don't give a fuck what you do. Unblock it. I, I don't have the emotional time to sit there and hold his hand. And it's going to be, you're going to time. I know you'll come through. I got Who a question gives a shit? So have you ever just splurged on yourself? Uh, yeah, everyone, you know, I like the idea of being able to do it. Give right? me an example of something. So when I got some real money, I felt real bad because I had flown back in from uh, New York. And this guy ordered a pizza and this Nigerian dude gave it. He brought it to me at midnight. I'm like, fuck, how did I get How did I get here, you know? So I made the motherfucker come back so I could give him a hundred bucks, right? I just felt bad about the whole thing. And I was like, okay, why do I feel like this, right? Do I have the advantages over people? But the truth is, you can tell people you're pretty, right? You can't tell a motherfucker you're smart because you look like a real asshole when you do that. <laughs> so if I say I am pretty and smart, right? I just look like a sheer asshole. But when you when you can see that it makes a difference in people's lives, right? And how did you get here? And when people say, hey, look, if you do what I did, you can get here too. That is a fucking lie. They have no idea how much I wanted it more than anybody. Me and God had so many discussions when I would get these rejection letters. I still have them. There's 12 rejection letters that I got. Your brother's a piece of shit. They didn't say that. <laughs> but when I read it, that's what it says. So I'd go down to the chapel and I'd have this discussion with God. Have you ever seen the show Black Jesus? That's how Jesus and I talk to each other. Watch Black Jesus. <laughs> that's how Black Jesus, we talk to each other like that, right? Wow. Because Jesus to me is real. God is not a God that wants to make you suffer. He wants you to do better. But you can right. only do better when you know better. That's right. So when I would make speeches at schools, I used to make them with Willie D in the South Park Mexican. Because I was a new guy, I would start off and I would just tell everybody, I think y'all should drop out of school today. Don't wait <laughs> any longer. You should quit now. I don't want to compete with y'all. And if you're just dumber than shit, be dumber than shit. Yeah. But the message that people say, find something you like, and it's like never working a day in your life, is the dumbest fucking thing I've ever heard. I like riding my bike, but I cannot get anybody to pay me to watch me ride my bike. 
Not but yet. if I make a whole bunch of money, I can go get a bike and fly to France and ride in this thing called the Tour de France. See, right? It's a way better experience than just riding around the neighborhood with my basket. I'm like, bing, bing, bing. Who gives a shit? My brother gets uh, enjoyment and he splurges when um, he sees more money come in. That's his splurge. That's the biggest drug to my brother. You know, Doing a deal? Ugh, for, that's wonderful. You know, for me, <laughs> it's when somebody repeats a song you wrote and you're able to connect with somebody on that level, a fan, a person, uh, somebody who understands you. Ooh, yeah. And that's my drug of choice. Mm -hmm. But he gets that same feeling when he can put somebody's deal together that's falling apart in the last 24 hours. If you're a person that worries about money, right? And I always worry about money. No matter how much I have, I always worry about money. Oh, man. And I'm I not going to have enough. I need to go... And so what I did when we were selling drugs, or selling weed, right? I'd always move the fence post on myself. When I get to a million bucks cash, I'm out of here, right? I get to a million bucks, like someone gets arrested, you give them some money, like, all right, when I get to two million, watch your children. Mm -hmm. We have dogs on set today. They're wonderful dogs. And if anybody wants one for 25,000 bucks, call my brother. I will not be taking those calls. But the dogs are just, oh, they're wonderful. So what do you think about stocks? Listen, I only try to do shit I know how to do, right? I don't want to go put my money with some guy. I'm not knowing what he's doing. And so, like me. real estate's the realest thing you can do. Name one time that real estate has lost value in any market. 2007, 2008, it went down, but why did it go down? Because it was in bad products. It wasn't the real estate that went down. Real estate continues to appreciate. If we'd have bought all the houses that we were growing pot in, it'd be a different thing because we'd have to fight the government to get them back. So never buy those assets. <laughs> if you're doing some nefarious, illegal shit, Keep it in your mama's name, right? Who taught us that? The greatest rapper alive, Bun B. That's right. Put your crib in your mama's name. Yeah. Did y'all, did you guys ever have, uh, like in the 90s, you know, they, of course, uh, crack became an uh, epidemic. Like, did you guys ever deal with that? Uh, yeah. I like a good crack. No, no. <laughs> I tried crack one time for 10 years straight. You tried crack? No. But what is crack, right? Let's talk about it. Crack right. is uh, a cocaine, right? Cocaine. And, and baking soda. And it makes what? It makes... People have crack. People have so crack, right? They, the federal government, they used to charge them 100 to 1 right. for crack to cocaine, right? If you had 100 one to 1. Grand, if you had one something that is coke. impure to something that is pure, you're going to charge them for more shit. How? Right. Right? But because black people was in the black community, we could charge them more because no one stood up and said shit. They did it. They got reasonable recently and charged them 17 to 1. So now it's not 100 to 1 any longer. They did everybody a favor, 17 to 1. Forever. That is some bullshit yeah. in its finest. So when I first got into prison, I was hanging out with these white dudes, right? They're like, man, we were fucking partying and shit and banging these bitches. That's how white guys talk to me in prison. <laughs> and they said, man, we started, we started uh, smoking some coke. And I was like, man, I didn't know you could smoke coke. I didn't know you could light it. He said, no, no, we were free base. And I said, in that crack? He said, no, no, no. Crack is something blacks do. I, they put something more addictive in it. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So I just listen. So when I had one of my rap conversations, I was like, hey, what are you putting crack to make it more addictive? They're like, what are you, stupid? There's nothing more addictive <laughs> in that. We take some cocaine and some baking soda, we put it together, and we make crack. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. What's so fucked up about this is that you have cut it with something that's impure to lessen it. But what happens? When you snort the cocaine, it lasts for 30 to 45 minutes. It costs you 50 bucks. If you smoke it, it lasts 10 minutes. If I buy 50 rocks during the day at $10 a piece, I spend the same amount of money because cocaine is a rich man's drug, right? But if I can rock it out to you, you just gotta get little intervals of it, right? That's the only difference. That there's no, I, I, here's the other thing about drugs. Not everything is your shit. If you won't suck somebody's dick for it or sell all of your <laughs> shit, it's not your shit. It's not. When I got home, I never did any drugs. And I was like, I went to prison for drugs. And I got to hear that. You're a dumb motherfucker. You went to prison for drugs. You never did no drugs. So I wanted to smoke weed. I wanted to do some cocaine. And none of it has worked because I'm still fat as shit. <laughs> you can see how people like it, right? And how they, but the only thing I know for sure that's a real drug is something that gives you a, you have a physical change to it when you stop doing it, right? And what is that? What is the only thing that I know of that will do that? It's heroin, opium, right? Cocaine, if you stop doing cocaine, you'll be mad that afternoon, but it doesn't make you stop doing whatever the fuck you're doing. Weed does not make you stop doing whatever the fuck you're doing. Injust policy is when they make marijuana a Schedule 1 narcotic. And cocaine and heroin are a Schedule 2. How can the gateway drug be a number one See, and the motherfuckers give you a Schedule 2 because heroin and cocaine are a Schedule 2 narcotic? That is a fucked up policy. See, the crack thing was, was like this in our neighborhood. We, we didn't grow up on the wrong side of the track, but we grew up enough close enough to hear the whistle blow. Yes, we did. We were and right so, there. 
if you drove down Fondren, you were, there, were, uh, there were crack houses. If you so, drove down Chimney Rock, there were crack houses. So, so in the area that we lived in, Southwest Houston, it was up and coming in the, oh man, this is so fantastic. But when the market dropped and the oil went to shit, they just started selling everything off. They started building apartments, leases, whatever. And so at a part, there was a place on Fondren West Airport where they had to build a concrete wall behind the apartments because there was so much shooting, people had to sleep in their bathtub, right? That was the area that we lived in. And what it taught me about real estate was, what's the new area that's gonna be high and fired up? Buy in the neighborhood you know that are already good. Stop fucking around on projecting where the fuck you think it's gonna happen at. Buy in the, sh the medical center, guess what? They're not moving the medical center, right? That's gonna be a good neighborhood for a long time. Places that are zoned to Bel Air High School, that's the 11th largest, best school in Texas, they're not moving that motherfucker. They're gonna make them kids keep performing there. They get a lot of money to do that. Buy houses in that area. Stop making yourself a less of a person. We built our first new construction house. It was for a million bucks. The guy on the phone said, don't you think that's a little advantageous? I said, it's just another comma and a zero. It's the same shit. It's just a bigger number. Don't be afraid of the number. So. What's your views on um, buying land over just buying like a house? So what, what, what do you like about just buying land? I like the fact that um, if you drive around and look at certain prospect, you're like, okay, I can see futuristic. Why are you waiting on the future? Why can't we do it now? Why can't we buy the lot, the infill lot, because and build on it now? It because you can get it for cheap. Why can't we just do it now? Because Why wait? Because all the other places around it hasn't built up yet. You so you're looking at the that. future development of it, right? So yes. you're looking at some 10 acres, 15 acres. So you're going to hold on to that. You're going to appreciate, but not as fast as a house that's in a neighborhood is going to appreciate right. because there's already shit around that house, right? If we go to Prairie View and we want to buy some stuff out there, we could have got it for a really good price. When I went out there and they had taken down all the old signs and put up new signs, I'm like, oh, something's happening here. And sure enough, Dankin, a Korean uh, manufacturer of heaters, had built a huge manufacturing place out there. Right. And it just spurred the area to continue on. Mm -hmm. But that's what real estate does. In Texas, like in Houston, real estate's much like my waistline. It grows outward. We don't build up in the cities. We move further out, right? So if you bought some stuff in Brookshire or wherever, much like Dallas, look at Dallas. Dallas got Fort Worth, right? They got uh, north of Dallas. They got where the, where are the Rangers play? So you all got that all that shit, but they don't call it Dallas, right? So it spreads out. It doesn't grow up, right? So Atlanta, Houston, Dallas, we're all fairly newer cities compared to Chicago. I'm doing a home. I'm doing a deal for a nursing home, right? And I like the drug rehab places because the government has helped spur this epidemic of opium, hillbilly heroin, right? So now they're gonna have to fix it. Mm -hmm. So now they're gonna have to pay for beds somewhere. And if you had a treatment facility program, right? They get $600 a day. I'm like, what? They don't, can't afford $600 for their dope. Why the fuck would you pay $600 to treat them? <laughs> but you know, with, with Bernard, what he's saying is well, why wait? Um, mm -hmm. People don't realize you don't need any money to be in real estate, right? There's ways for people to pay for your project. If they see the potential in that project and they can make money with you, they'll finance that project. Mm. And so you don't have to wait to the land gets wait there. You, you don't have money. to wait, but do you no. have to have good credit? No, no, because no. we're loaning on the asset, the idea of what it's right. gonna be worth in the future. Correct. Exactly. So, so for instance, if you want to buy, let's say an apartment complex that had 50 doors in it, right? And for some way it was a value add, which means you could bring value to that. The person can see that, hey, this apartment complex every 10 years is going to double in, in, in it's value. It's double. The value goes and up. I'm going to base your loan off what the property is bringing in. So the property brings in money. They're going to loan on that. So they're not even involved in you in the whole picture. I mean, they're obviously involved with you, but it's what the asset does. How much is going to go up? There's a, every year they tell you how much your area goes up, 2%, 3% year over year, right? So what usually happens is people will pay the, the rent, right? That pays your note, so you don't have to worry about it. And then you live on the appreciation. You wait for the appreciation to double. Now you have a house that someone else paid for that you got the appreciation on. If you have 10 of those things, that's how you build wealth in real estate, right? Do real estate again. Real estate is the only thing that's real, right? At the end of the day, what do you have? You have a piece of property. They're not making any more of it, right? Nope. It's all over. Everybody's got their property that they're gonna make, right? But the, if you can find the value in there and you can find the motivation of that person that needs to sell it, now you've, you've created something that's really awesome. And that's how you build the wealth in it, right? Dude, that's getting heavy. <laughs> so my question is, have y'all ever watched the movie Burlesque? Burlesque. Mm. Does it got some naked titties in it? I like titties. You can't buy them, though. It wasn't naked. Oh. No. Yes. Burlesque, what <laughs> You're was it about? The one, oh, okay. Um, air rights. Is that a thing? Wow, air rights. 
So you're talking about a bubble property? Yeah. That's so awesome, isn't it? They have found a new way to sucker people into a deal. They have, <laughs> what do they have? They have the they have the, the, the mineral rights, right? Uh-huh. A lot of land's bought and sold without mineral rights, right? right. Because there might be and oil the air or rights. water. Above or your house, I'm going to yes. own this thing so I can have communication happen. That seems to me like a bunch of shit. But someone has facilitated For properties that. around that. Where, might be, that was in burlesque. It was in burlesque. Saying? It was in burlesque huh. because what, what, what it Titties. was. She wanted... Um, People were trying to buy her property. She she had one of those um, what you call those showgirl places. Yeah, right, right, right. And they weren't trying to give her enough money. Well, they end up going to the man next door and telling them, okay, well, you love the view that you have, right? Right. If I sell this property, this view is going to be gone because they're I'm gonna, gonna build another make, building. Right, and it's going to be so high, da da da. But I would leave this how it is if you pay me X Y Z for the air rights. Well, so sometimes what they're doing now is they, that all that communication that flies over the top, right? All the internet stuff, right? They want to make sure they can get a piece of that. So I understand exactly what you're saying. They're saying, hey, listen, if you don't build this building here, I'll pay you for this egress so I can keep seeing what I want to see. Right. Right? That makes good sense if you'll pay somebody because you can guarantee what your vision will be forever. Instead of waiting, oh, man, it's going to be today. He's going to build something, you know? He's going to put up a net, right? You just guaranteed yourself a way to say, hey, listen, for my lifetime, I know it'll happen this way, right? Listen, right. I've seen people... My buddy Sam, he had this beautiful um, loft condo, and there was nothing built next door to him. And right, he had Until a beautiful view of downtown Houston. Six months later, this four-story he, condominium. He got to see brick in, walls, and he got to see beautiful. brick walls from then on out. He That's was, like when you see a motherfucker that says Lake View. Mm, it might not be Lake View uh, for too much longer. You might be seeing the back of someone's but, house. But, but listen. Right. Don't, so it is a thing. It is a thing, right? De- definitely. Wow. But don't hesitate in real estate. Real estate has allowed us Take to Take action. Change. You can mess it. There's a lot of forgiveness in real estate, right? Yeah, Just buy it for the right price. And if you make an offer that's not low enough, you feel sick about it, you should make it lower. That's right. Mm. You should be sick to your stomach like, man, this offer is so I don't so feel low. good about offering this people. I feel bad about that. That's the number you're supposed to be offering. But if anybody needs help in real estate, they can call us. Brian seven, at 713 713- Five five one five five one thirty seven forty six thirty seven forty six. Do not like or subscribe me. I don't care. <laughs> but, I, I just want to thank y'all. You know, you guys um, definitely um, dope. And and I want to talk about your your, your hoodie. Dope hats. Dope yeah, heads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, the animation is blowing up everywhere. We've had a whole bunch of success. I know it. I and, love it. It's crazy. And, and everybody wants to voice a character. Uh, people are starting to recognize us more and more from our pop-ups. Every time we bring out merch, we end up selling out. So we do these limited runs of, of different styles that we do. Uh, and so we have a new merch drop dropping very soon. So if you go on to our Instagram. You can, Instagram. You can find us at dopeheads.com. Dopeheads.com. And so um, Be go calm. to our link tree and just subscribe. Link tree. And you'll be Christmas connected. tree. When yeah. the cartoon coming out. So we're working right now on that animation Bible. See, I in music, I'm able to make a good beat and find a good artist, and I can have a hit song in an hour. With animation, I need to develop a log line. I need to do a script. I need to rewrite the script at least two or three times. Right. Then I have to find somebody who can do an animation Bible, who can and do the all the characters. And, and, then, and then the storyboard. And so it, it's a process. And so in About order to do About two it, years or a year or what? You don't have that long. You better do something quickly. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful <laughs> in the next six to nine months, you'll be okay. seeing us on HBO Max or Netflix or Got who knows, it. Fox Soul. There's a lot of, you know, interest in it already. But we're going to take our time. We're going to do it right because what do they all need content they saw all that rice and shit and they want to open up some more stuff so come and get it ring the dinner bell i gotta ask you this before i close this off like how was the trio burger experience and also how was it going on their satellite radio show um first of all the burger bun was is good absolutely amazing like uh bun is beyond bun is smart guy. um the Trill Burger experience, there was, a lot of, up. there was a lot of hype going into it because everybody has enjoyed a Trill Burger. All your favorite celebrities, you're like, oh, no, no. <laughs> but when you really take that first bite, it's, it's, real just, shit. it's confirmation about what everybody else has said. They were it, right. It's really good. It's not People just, that weigh less than 200 pounds should stop sending shit out to Yelp. If you don't put your weight, <laughs> what you're doing next to your review, Fuck you. Do not put it on there. If you're 400 pounds and you said the hamburger is good, I believe you. If you're 48 pounds and got buck teeth and you don't know what the food tastes like, I don't trust you. These put your weight on wonderful. what you're reviewing. The Trill Burger was fantastic. You don't get to change it, right? They make it the way they're going to make it. You just say, I want three, two, one, whatever's going to be. 
and it was fucking fantastic. It was greasy enough where it got to your wrist, right? When you pick up the bird, get a good grease on the wrist, right? There was enough cheese. The bun was all soft. I'm, I think it's a sourdough bun. I don't. I didn't take that many bites of it. Uh, yeah, right. But I inhaled it. It makes you. <laughs> it makes you want another one, but you're not able to because you're so full from the first one. Right. And so it was just a, an amazing. Oh, and even experience. the fries were good. They had like the crispies. They had like a, a, a crunch on the outside. I don't know how much this is true, but I hear uh -oh. a Trill Tenders is coming. Trill Tenders. I haven't confirmed oh. it or not, so I don't know what the status of that is yet. That'd I just be cool. saw. I just saw a Let's post. Just keep that I don't. Going. I don't know if it's AI generated nowadays. You know. You know. Never trust. You it. never know what anybody is doing on the internet. Yeah, man. Man, for real. Thank you guys for coming <laughs> on the show, man. I definitely will know you guys are going to be coming to Dallas. Absolutely. We're going to be doing this pretty much uh, at least quarterly or sometime. Let's get the money asset thing going. Let's start a conference. Like, get the money. Regular people get the money. Man. Don't be intimidated by this, this bullshit. I love money, though. Yeah. Well, I love it because people say you're not supposed to love money, but you should because it'll do shit for you that nothing else will. Money won't buy you happiness, but it'll enjoy the misery that you can afford. Man. It's a wonderful deal. <laughs> Check it, man. Hey, man. Listen, man. Go get your Bernard money. Don't listen to that dumb shit. Toe down, came through, and shut it down. If you ever heard, I don't think I heard that much get talk that about real money. estate on this show before so I it's think these boys went like in right check now. it man hey man check it's been it. another it's great somebody. segment of Boss Talk 101 I'm, I'm, boss. Gonna, I'm not gonna lie well, y'all could stop. smell the vision that's going on right here and the it's food that's being cooked in here oh. I can't wait for these cameras to go <laughs> off so I can attack that food it's that real man. food check it man it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101 what a boss is talking and we out <laughs>